as promised, let's get chatting with the management of Amber Enterprises. Uh, they had done, uh, you know, an acquisition earlier uh, this week. Uh, so let's try to get in some details. We have Mr. Singh who joins us uh, to run us through uh, a few details. Remember, the company that they have bought is uh, Sidwell Ref Refrigeration, and they have bought 80% stake in that uh, company. Uh, hi, hi, thanks so much, Mr. Singh, for uh, joining in today. Well, if you could give us a few details first. Um, the street believes that it's positive. I was reading a lot of brokerage notes. But one thing is not mentioned is how much money are you paying? If you could give us a sense of that. And also in terms of revenues, the acquired business, you know, this uh, Sidwell refrigeration, the revenues have moved from around 115 to 180 crores. What's the scalability out there? Um, where do you see it headed? So Sidwal Refrigeration is one of the largest uh, players in the field of uh, air manufacturer of air conditioners for Indian Railways, Rajdhani Shatabdi coaches, as well as metros, bus air conditioning and defense. Uh, it is one of the leading players. So it's uh, a good synergy for us because we are already a dominant leader in the room air conditioner space. And within the heating, ventilation, air conditioning space, this is a product expansion strategy and uh, upgraded technology as well as new customers for us. Uh, the amount of uh, money to be paid for the transaction, we have just recently signed the definitive agreements for equity stake of 80%, is not to be disclosed right now because of the confidentiality agreement signed with, between the promoters. We will, however, we will disclose it as soon as the transaction gets closed before 30th of April. And uh, the revenue of uh, Sidwal refrigeration has moved to from, uh, if last year it was 165 uh, crores and this year it is expected to touch by around 195 crores. And the company has strong order book, already in hand order book of 220 odd crores uh, for the next year. All right, 220 odd crores is the order book, so revenue visibility comes in. Uh, we understand that you're not uh, uh, able to tell us the valuation at uh, uh, the, the, the price that you paid for this, but if you could tell us, you know, broadly, I was looking at your revenues in your market cap, you trade at one-time sales. Uh, is that the sort of money that you're looking to pay for uh, Sidwal refrigeration as well? No, we have uh, given a multiple of EBITDA, so it is. Uh, I, I can I can disclose the range yeah, in which name? we have paid. So the range of EBITDA which we have paid is about 5.75 to 6.75 range. Okay, and the margins on this business is what? The EBITDA margins on Sidwal? It is, it is, it is, it is 20 plus uh, EBITDA margins. It is a very healthy margins uh, in this space because entry barriers are quite high. Entry barriers are as as long as five to six years uh, in this space. So 200 crore revenue, 20 percent margins. That would be 40 crore and it's EBITDA, a, and uh, multiply that by the multiples that you're talking about, right. five to six times. That's about 250 to 300 crores that you're paying for this. Oh, well, within this, that range, yes. Interesting. I think you trade at... We'll, we'll get, uh, disclose the exact amount by, by 30th of April. I think you trade at around 10 times uh, EV upon a bitter because I'm just taking a look at it. You're likely to do around 225 crores for this year in terms of an EBITDA, and your current market capitalization is around 2,500 2, crores. But in the EV component, I don't know your debt. So if you could help me out, what exactly is the debt in your books? Uh, do you have a debt? And uh, if not, then do you have cash, and how much is that? So on a standalone basis, Ember uh, has a debt, uh, long-term debt of only seven crores, and uh, all working capital put together and Ember books is less than hundred crores. So we'll be funding this uh, through our internal accruals as well as partly by debt. Um, so about hundred crores worth cash is what you said you have on your books. The other hundred crores, one fifty comes from debt. Yeah. All right, so that's about the acquisition, uh, Mr. Singh. Thanks a lot for that. We'll uh, talk about your own business now. Uh, FY19, I remember you had given us a guidance of 10% volume growth. That would imply 41% growth in the fourth quarter. Uh, directionally, if you could tell us if that's happened or not. Yes, so we are very much aligned to deliver 2.1 million units. Last year, we did 1.9 million. Mm -hmm. uh, Q1 and Q2 and Q3 was muted because of... Uh, uh, unseasonal rains and uh, the whole market did not grow, industry did not grow, but however in Q4 we have grown because we've added customers, we've added new products. In January itself we were 55% uh, above uh, the volume of last year. In February we have done 45% above the volumes and in March also we delivered, so we will be delivering one 2.1 number which we have guided for. 
You know, Mr. Singh, uh, over the last week or last 10 days or so, it's been getting quite hot. But we understand that inventory levels, they have been rising and there are various uh, producers who have been, uh, you know, taking price cuts. Uh, tell us, uh, you know, what is uh, the kind of inventory that you are sitting on? Have you noticed any kind of slowdown in terms of buying? And you always talk about customer additions. Uh, if you could tell us who is the new customer, if you could disclose uh, uh, that as well. And the last time I think you were telling us capacity utilization is 50, 55 percent. So give us a sense of demand on the ground. So we've added uh, Carrier Mydia as a customer, we've added Flipkart as a customer, we've added uh, Havels as a customer. And recently we've added uh, Toshiba also as a customer. Okay. Uh, so these are four new customers which have come up, uh, out of which three have already started billing. Okay. And one is yet to be started, uh, we'll, we'll start billing. On uh, on the inventory side, you know, the southern part of the markets and the coastal and the and the whole central part and western part of India has, uh, has upside on the sales now. Uh, north is still muted because of uh, extended winters and uh, you know we are still hoping that north india the winters the summers have yet to pick up so i think uh, on overall basis there are certain brands who are sitting with inventories of certain models like 2 ton or 1 ton but 1.5 ton is not available and there are certain brands who are not sitting on in inventories so uh, yes there has been price cuts by lg has reduced prices there has been price cuts by other people also not because of largely by because of the uh, you know the competition because of the strategy where lg wanted that they wanted to you know sell more of five star and they want the industry to shift towards five star so they are disrupting the market so that's that's what is happening in the branded space we saw a cut in your margins in the third quarter do you think these price cuts by end customers would result in you getting lower realizations as well your input costs increasing uh, is there a downside risk to your margins No, we don't have a downside risk because none of the customers have uh, basically cut down the uh, growth prospect or even the order book. The order book remains same what, what the customers told us. Hmm. So there's no such disruption in the in branded space. There's, there's, you know, there are 52 players fighting with each other. So there, there's a lot of uh, cutthroat competition at that place and everybody plays by the strategy. Some plays by inventories, some plays by market share. So that's a different strategy altogether which goes on. Whereas we are... Uh, suppliers to everybody so that doesn't disrupt us if, if the prices are getting cut in the market let's talk about the working capital then uh, I, the last time you joined us you told us that working capital is likely to come down I think from 65 days to sub 40 days uh, so that's about uh, so tell us about working capital of the current entity that you have and in terms of the acquired entity as well the working capital days I believe are around 180 to 200 days do you see that coming down from there and how do you manage to uh, plan on doing that In uh, in Amber standalone, uh, you know, networking capital days uh, are yes, almost 40 days. They did go to as 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 high as 65 to 70 days due to the unpredictable rains. We had uh, long invent, uh, inventories with us, which 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 have been liquidated right now. So by March, you will see the number of 40 to 45 days uh, in our books. Okay. On the acquired entity, yes, there is a networking capital cycle of 180 to 200 days, which we are confident to bring it down to 100 to 200, 100 to 180. 100 to 120 days in next two to three years because we see a lot of uh, rationalization which potential for in the inventory cycles and the creditor sides so but yes they have to there is a retention money which goes in the indian railways and metros five to ten percent is retained by indian railways and metros which is paid after 100 and 100 days or 180 days after the air conditioners are fitted on the coach so that will remain it, but it, that company doesn't require working capital requirement from the banks because of the high gross margins it enjoys. All right, and the elections won't yeah, and impact. And it's a debt-free company. And the elections won't impact any sort of ordering coming in from the government uh, uh, organizations. No, no, it doesn't impact. All right, Mr. Singh. Everyone staying cool anyway, <laughs> right. Let's see how that goes about, given the model code of conduct is also in place. So thanks a lot, Mr. Singh, for joining in. Wish you good luck for this acquisition. And uh, let's see whether uh, the volumes grow at uh, uh, the, the rate that you're projecting. And the Seems like definitely. a good acquisition. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, uh, we could work Mangalam with a number of 220 to 250 crores in the next one month or the entire street will come to know. Let's hope we have uh, given them a broad range at least. Absolutely. So it looks like that. Uh, uh, well, well, we'll also keep an eye out on how the margins pan out and the demand actually given the sort of commentary that we're getting from the end consumers. Uh, so that was about Amber Enterprises.
But we have another listing on our bourses today, a state-owned company, MSTC, listed on uh, the exchanges today with the discount to an issue price. And on the back of this listing, we spoke with B.B. Singh, the chairman and the MD of MSTC. Let's listen into what he had to say. Say so we have completed our provisioning uh, uh, and we have cleaned our balance sheets. We do not foresee any uh, future provisioning uh, for our trading business. And uh, uh, had there been no provisioning, uh, the uh, uh, both top line and bottom, bottom line would have been, you know, as compared to uh, the previous years. So this is our e-commerce business, which has been the mainstay of uh, our business. Uh, that is growing at the rate of 40% plus. And uh, the bottom line, uh, we feel that uh, it will be growing uh, uh, in double digits, uh, uh, not lesser than that. Well, the markets have come off the high point of the day, but we'll wrap up on Chartbusters. You stay with us. Trading R comes up next.